Good morning and welcome in Geneva. The Excite conference is now open. And I invite Mr. Jacques Ayer, Director of the Natural History Museum of Geneva. Mr. Jacques Ayer. Wow, we are a lot of people. Monsieur le Conseiller d'État, Monsieur le Maire, dear Excite participants, Geneva City of Science offers you a warm and heartfelt welcome. As director of the Natural History Museum of Geneva, I have the pleasure and honor of opening the 29th annual conference of Excite. This first edition in Switzerland promises to be a very, very stimulating event with a lot of participants. I am sure you are all aware of the conference program, so I won't go into all the details of the over 100 panel sessions, workshops, and discussions, but I will just mention some highlights. The two eagerly awaited keynote speeches from the vastness of, of the universe to the microscopic fauna of our intestines. The gala dinner tonight with a traditional Swiss fondue party in an ice ring. Certainly a first in the Excite Social Event history. A very special open doors evening tomorrow for the Nocturne at the Natural History Museum with a lot of creative surprises. A year ago, almost to the day, the organizers of the Porto Conference strongly advised us to start the organization of this event as soon as possible because the workload would be great. A year later, I can tell you that they were totally right and that the organization of such a conference is something of a crazy adventure. However, if I was given the choice again, I wouldn't hesitate for a moment. Collaboration with the XI team has been excellent and enriching, and the project worked as a team building process within the, the organizing teams and generated new creative partnerships. I would like to give my most sincere thanks to my teams at the Natural History Museum for their hard work, in particular, Alice Brigui, Hervé Grocaré, and also Enrico Zuffi, who, was, who initiated the project five years ago. I'd like to thank our partners, CERN, the University of Geneva, and Campus Biotech. I'd like to thank the City of Geneva and the Canton of Geneva for their trust and their support. And also our local sponsors, the Loterie Romande, the Dudley Wright, Henri Moser, and Merinoise du Casino Foundations, the Swiss Academy of Sciences, and all our local and national partners. And finally, thank you to the International Conference Center Geneva for housing the conference. And a big thank you to my wife, Luella, for her very precious support. A couple of days ago, a journalist asked me what a conference like this was for. I answered him, at a time when scientific knowledge is under pressure from general scepticism and even resurgent obscurantism, the culture of science is more than ever of cardinal importance in meeting the global and especially environmental challenges faced by today's society. Science and the transmission of knowledge must find ways to deal with the post-truth era and the dangerous ignorance resulting from it. Ignorance that may change our common understanding of the world and condition our cultural, economic, and social choices. By sharing our experiences and imagining new ways of communicating knowledge, I am convinced that this conference in Geneva can contribute some concrete answers and practical, practical solutions to, to these challenges. With the theme, Creative Collision, we are going to show that in a society where thought, words, and deeds are becoming increasingly standardized, 
placing different worldviews on a collision course can be a source of innovation and creativity. We must always remember that the richness and beauty of the world depends on its diversity, whether cultural, biological, ethnic, or religious. The future of our societies depends on our capacity to recognize this and to live it. In conclusion, with huge pleasure and to my great relief, I declare open this new edition of Excite Annual Conference in Geneva. I wish you a wonderful and stimu stimulating time with lots of creative collisions. A big thank you for being here. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Jacques Ayer. And now I invite Mr. Sami Canaon, Mayor of the City of Geneva, in charge of culture and sport. Mr. Sami Canaon. Monsieur le Conseil d'État, cher Thierry, ladies and gentlemen, dear friends, welcome in Geneva. As mayor of the city, I'm really very pleased and honored to welcome you here and to wish you a fantastic stay. You are in a city which has a long-standing tradition in science. I'm mentioning that because Geneva is well known as an international city, United Nations, as a city for luxury watches, for finance and trading, and not always recognized as it should be as a science city. Most of you probably know that Jean Calvin was one of the founders of the Protestant church. He is less known as a founder of many public institutions in Geneva, including the academy, which became the university. He was actually very interested and passionate for science and education. This university has become famous, and it is still now physically in the heart of the city, which is one of the, its assets to strengthen the links with the wider population. We have had in the story of Geneva many famous scientists. Horace Benedict de Saussure, Augustin Pyramus de Candolle, Gar Vogt, and many others. It's a long list, as long as the list of scientific discoveries they left us. It's also the city which hosts the CERN, the European Center for Nuclear Research, one of the biggest scientific institutions in the world. But this is not only history, it's also a present and very lively present activity. These scientists have left us with huge collections and knowledge. This is maintained, it's being studied, conserved in our institutions, museums, scientific institutions, mainly in the framework of the city of Geneva, the two institutions oriented on natural sciences, the Bot Botanical Garden and the Museum for History, Natural History and its special site for History of Sciences. Two public institutions, which belongs to the city of Geneva, which means that they belong to the citizens of Geneva. Both institutions are very active, obviously, in scientific research, more than ever very recognized research internationally, but also very active in sharing research and science with a wider audience, not, not keeping it to specialists. We have many events, local events, national events, international events, and we are especially proud to host the Excite Conference, especially because it focuses on how to share science with a wider audience. We have had a similar Congress last year with the Botanical Gardens, the biggest event in Geneva last year. Geneva citizens are very curious. They can be even very critical, but they get involved, and they, any occasion we give them to get involved in debate about science in the widest sense, technology, and so on, they use it, and they really like it. Actually, early July, in a few weeks from now, we have, we'll have the biennial uh, Nuit de la Science, the Science Night, which is a very popular event where in an open park, uh, the scientists share concrete experiences with the wider population, and every two years, it's a huge success. 
So definitely Geneva is a sans city. It's also a city of dialogue. You may know, as I mentioned, a lot of United Nations organizations here, a lot of international meetings. Geneva is specialized in negotiations, in dialogue, bringing people together who have conflicts, trying to solve them, bringing people together who define the new norms to organize society, daily life of people. For example, at the moment, we are talking about new conventions of Geneva for the digital world. So we're also very involved and interested in hosting dialogue about the place of science and technology in, this, in the city and in the society in general. And I definitely look forward to all the outcomes of your Congress. I know you will have lively discussions and exchanges and any good ideas about to strengthen the place of dialogue between scientists and wider population is welcome. I wish you an excellent stay in Geneva. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Sami Kanaon. And now I invite Mr. Thierry Apotelos. Um, Mr. Thierry Apotelos, please come on the stage. Mr. Thierry Apotelos, Councillor of State of the Canton of Geneva. Monsieur le maire de la ville de Genève, cher Sami, Monsieur le président d'Excite, Monsieur le directeur du Musée d'Histoire Naturelle, Ladies and gentlemen, it's my pleasure to address you a warm welcome in to Geneva at the EXCITE annual John Sessions. It's also a huge honor for us to host such in a meeting. As you probably know, how much we always are keen to promote our committed on international issues. As my English is definitely going down, you know, <laughs> I hope that you will apologize me if I do my uh, speech in French. C'est en effet, mesdames et messieurs, pour moi, en tant que ministre en charge de la cohésion sociale, que je vous adresse ces quelques mots de bienvenue à l'occasion de cette conférence annuelle d'Excite. L'honneur est grand, croyez-moi, pour une cité comme, Vernier, comme Genève d'accueillir en son sein aussi prestigieux un rassemblement de personnalités liées au monde de la recherche, de la communication scientifique et des musées. Merci ainsi aux organisatrices et aux organisateurs de la ville de Genève comme du comité d'Excite. La thématique qui nous réunit aujourd'hui, collision créative, fait écho à la place que Genève fait depuis de nombreuses années au rapport entre science, histoire, ouverture et lien entre les diverses disciplines. Créer des collisions positives, c'est ce que vous êtes venus toutes et tous faire ici durant cette prestigieuse session annuelle. Mesdames et Messieurs, vous êtes les fers de lance en Europe et dans le monde du partage du savoir, de la diffusion de la connaissance et de la sauvegarde du patrimoine humain et naturel, et vous avez choisi Genève, et je vous en remercie. Créer des collisions créatives, c'est aller à la rencontre de l'autre, de son savoir, de ses spécificités, de ses compétences. C'est exciter notre curiosité, chercher l'ouverture, mais aussi mettre le savoir à la portée du plus grand nombre. The honor for a city like Geneva to welcome such a prestigious gathering of personalities from the world of science museums is great, believe me. This is all the more true as the team that brings you together, Creative Collisions, echoes the importance that Geneva has been attributing for many years to the relationship between science, history, 
a spirit of openness and connections between the various disciplines. Creative, creating positive collisions is what you all came to do here during this prestigious annual meeting. You are at the forefront in Europe and in the world in sharing knowledge, in popularizing science, and in guarding the temples of human and natural heritage. You have chosen Geneva, and I thank you. To create creative collisions means to meet others with their knowledge, their specificities, their skills. It means to excite our curiosity, to seek openness, and in particular, to make our thoughts understood and shared with the largest possible number of people. Genève, vous le savez, probablement est une terre de science, de toutes les sciences. Geneva is, Geneva is, as some of you probably know, a land of science, of all sciences. Humaine, tout d'abord, puisqu'elle a accueilli, comme Monsieur le maire l'a rappelé, en son sein, des personnalités aussi importantes que Jean Calvin, Jean-Jacques Rousseau, de Saussure le linguiste ou encore Jean Piaget et même Jeanne Arche. First of all, in social sciences and humanities, since it has welcomed personalities as important as Jean Calvin, Jean-Jacques Rousseau, and sociolinguists such as Jean Piaget or uh, Jeanne Hirsch. Des sciences naturelles et de la nature ensuite, puisque Genève est aussi la patrie de deux saussures, des Hénards, des deux candoles de Karl Vogt, dont on sait combien ils ont contribué au progrès de la connaissance sur les humains et sur le monde qu'ils habitent. Then, uh, natural science and nature, since Geneva is also the homeland of des saussures, Hénard, de Candol and others, of whom we know how much they contributed to the progress of science. Genève est une terre d'accueil qui a su faire, au fil de son, de, sa, de son histoire, dialoguer la science et le monde. Geneva is a welcoming land that has always been able, over its long history, to establish dialogue between science and the world. Combien de trajectoires parallèles ont fait ici cohabiter les plus illustres penseurs des humanités avec une recherche de pointe How many parallel pathways have brought together the most illustrious thinkers at the forefront of social sciences and humanities Dire que les sciences sont constitutives de notre culture est un euphémisme. La place que Genève a toujours donnée au savoir dans sa construction est probablement l'un des plus forts fils conducteurs de son évolution vers la cité internationale qu'elle est devenue aujourd'hui. To say that science is an essential part of our culture is not just a, a euphemism. The importance that Geneva has always attributed to knowledge for advancing its development is probably one of the strongest drivers behind its progress towards the international city that it is now. Faire dialoguer toutes les cultures et tous les savoirs, voilà peut-être même ce qu'est notre vocation première. To foster the dialogue between all cultures and all their knowledge, this may even be its most important mission. Notre orgueil doit donc moins à la diversité de notre patrimoine muséal et à la richesse de nos collections qu'à la place que nous réservons à ceci et au sein de notre espace public. Our pride owes therefore less to the diversity of our cultural heritage in museums and the richness of our collections than to the place that we reserve for them in the public space. Rendre la science et la culture accessible au plus grand nombre de partager ainsi la connaissance. C'est là la mission à laquelle nous les politiques nous attachons une grande importance. Making science and culture accessible to as many people as possible and sharing knowledge is a mission to which we politicians attach great importance. Mesdames et messieurs, c'est une mission essentielle pour développer la cohésion sociale, la qualité de notre vivre ensemble, autrement pour entretenir une rigueur, une vigueur de notre démocratie. 
ladies and gentlemen, it is a, an essential mission to um, foster social cohesion and maintain the, a rigorous democratic culture, a vigorous democratic culture. À l'heure où la science subit de plein fouet le retour des dogmatismes, parfois même du charlatanisme, de l'invasion des fake news, il est important de rappeler combien nous avons besoin d'une science qui soit non seulement rigoureuse, mais également critique et ouverte sur le monde. Sortir des musées, des universités et des laboratoires, des expériences pour toucher le monde, voilà ce que signifie pour moi créer des collisions créatives. At a time when science collides head on with a return to beliefs, fake news or even charlatanism, it is important to remember how much we need a science that is not only rigorous but also open to the world. Je vous le concède, la tâche est ardue, mais elle est plus que nécessaire aujourd'hui. La science est vivante comme doivent l'être les musées qui la montrent. Elle est universelle en ce que chacun puisse y avoir accès. To get out of museums, laboratories and experiments to reach the world, that is what it means for me to create creative collisions. I admit that this task is difficult, but it is necessary more than ever. Science is alive as much as the museums that show it. Mesdames et messieurs, pour conclure, une société changée en seulement quelques siècles par la science et ses applications et qui doit plus que jamais repenser ses pratiques, croiser les savoirs pour inventer un nouveau vivre ensemble ou au fond un nouveau rapport au monde pour l'humanité. Je vous remercie de votre attention. Ladies and gentlemen, the Natural History Museum, CERN, the University of Geneva, and Campus Biotech bring together three exceptional personalities. Jean-Jacques Rousseau, writer and philosopher, Marie Curie, physicist and chemist, and Jean Piaget, psychologist and etymologist. Goodness, how? How can that be possible? Marie Curie is the link between them. And she is also able to create a magnetic communication with the vociferer actor, Jean-Marie Lehec. Jean-Marie, you are, you are, the messenger, yeah, of their intimate and reckless and creative collisions. So, this experience is exclusive to this EXCITE conference. I shall leave you with Monsieur Lehec. Jean-Jacques Rousseau to Mr. Piaget. Monsieur Piaget, please, allow me to ask you frankly, with the utmost respect to yourself, but uh, your imitations of babies, hmm? of what use are they to those poor innocents? What are you learning from them? Hmm? What are we learning about the education of children? You should reread my Emile. Oh, you can smile, Madame La Curie. You and your radiant findings. Yes, I shall dare it again, my friend, so I may offer you once more. Beware your science. Beware science. Science is born out of superstition. Voilà tout. Hmm. It's an established fact. It, it perverts the imagination. Yes, madame, no need to protest. It is so. Marie Curie. There, there. 
My little Rousseau. I'm not a little Rousseau. As Monsieur Piaget has inferred constantly since you brought us together. Monsieur who always believes that I'm returning to the first months of my childhood. <laughs> I was buried at the Pantheon, madame, as you were. You will not so easily govern my soul. Neither one of you. Oh, oh man, he's, he's born good, but, but society corrupts humanity with his shocking assertion and sensational discoveries. God, your cold doctors know nothing about the soul and the body. However revolutionary we think they are, <laughs> they have always been subject to government, as are all the peoples. You, Monsieur Jean Piaget, you diminish men from the lofty heights of your laboratory manipulations. You contribute to drawing him away from his simple original nature, persuaded that you are acting for his well-being. <laughs> Jean Piaget, oh, oh, my very dear, and river Jean-Jacques, I'm truly sorry that I may have lacked respect in any form or manner, but with this candid exuberance, candid, did he say candid? He said candid, eh? Well, 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 well. Frank exuberance, if you prefer, frank exuberance. But Jean-Jacques, you have mistaken the enemy. We are like you at the service of humanity, my dear countrymen, and I implore you to acknowledge the giant steps that Madame Curie has helped us to take. And indeed, if we are able to communicate today, it's thanks, thanks to the marvels of whose genius. <laughs> and who, if not this great lady, went to the battlefield in 1418 under enemy fire to heal the wounded using science of radiology? Rousseau. Yes, yes, yes. Well, 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 very well, well, well. Yes, I know. But uh, woman is made to please man, to assist him, and man is in command. Et voilà tout that that. In truth, sewing becomes her better than education, and all that kind of excitement. Marie Curie. Uh -huh. It is not too late to denounce you to me too, my dear Jean-Jacques. <laughs> me too. Have you not got wind of this tempest amongst our descendants? Rousseau, me too? <laughs> me too? To me, me too? To me? No. 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 But... Uh, Wherever might that have come from? Marie Curie, <laughs> from everywhere, my dear, and from the depths of time. <laughs> Be assured, Monsieur Rousseau, let me, Marie Curie, tell you, the time is coming when women will become human beings. And Rousseau blacklisted. Uh, no, 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 me, no, me, me too, me too, me too. Me, oh, Marie, dear Marie, no, forgive me if I have offended you. You whose company I so enjoy. I do not wish to quarrel again, and especially with you, such a beautiful soul. It's just, uh, you know, well, uh, my epoch and now, and, uh, I'm so ill. I suffer so, uh, always so isolated. Uh, so my brilliance leaves me sometimes. Oh, Mary, my dear Mary, thank you. Thank you, Mary Curie, for, for accepting me, the rebel, the, uh, the inconsolable. Hmm. Jean Piaget. Oh. Pour Jean
Jean-Jacques. He's sleeping now in your arms, Marie. <laughs> yes, in truth, he is like a child. He has the same energy, innocence, and brilliance. He reminds us forcefully uh, of how we underestimate intelligence in the early years. Yeah. Naturally, predisposition is immense before embarking on language and society, but it becomes perverted. One must find it again during a good and long education. Rousseau said this quite rightly in Emile. It's true. Marie Curie, shh. Piaget, emotional. Oh, what passion. This good Jean-Jacques. He will rock you as on a boat until the end of the world. The savage. Shh. Yes. Shh. Shh. And now... <laughs> I invite Mr. Herbert Münder, Excite President and General Manager, Universum Bremen. Mr. Herbert Münder. Dear Councillor of State, dear Mayor of the City of Geneva, dear Jack, dear colleagues and friends, it's a great pleasure for me to welcome you all at the Excite Annual Conference 2018. It's really impressive to see so many participants in this room. As you know, the last year's editions, there have always been more than 1,000 experts discussing latest developments in our field, and I'm sure there will be the same number of experts this year. But may I remind you how many people would have been in this room 15, 20 years ago? Let, take me, let me take you with me with, on a short journey back in time. In the early 90s of the last century, when I was a postdoc at the biggest research center in Germany, we organized the first day of Open Doors, and we were extremely excited about the response. There have been 40,000 guests in one day. At the same time, or at that time, we thought, let's inform the public even more about our research, they will understand what we do and how important our work is. Finally, the general public will accept our scientific findings. You all know the outcome of this process. Although the general public was fascinated by science, the science communicators had to recognize that the one-way approach of science communication failed. Studies showed that better informed publics were even more hesitant against research. From year to year, science communicators learned more and more that we have to dialogue with the public. We developed two-way communication concepts, hoping that this would help to increase the acceptance for science. Scientists and science communicators made even one step beyond that point. They developed participatory events to listen to the general public and to offer a platform to them where they could, have, where they could express their thoughts and their ideas. Science centers and museums did exhibitions in the co-creation process with the public. They brought the views of their visitors on stage. I think we all believe that finally the general public would accept scientific findings. We always argued based on scientific evidence and expected that the public will also use arguments. Personally, I have to say, I did not expect a situation where politicians and decision makers stop using arguments and just say, I don't believe. This is a point where it becomes really, really challenging to convince someone to at least accept the scientific concepts and the scientific processes. In addition, we are facing arguments like evolution theory is too complicated, or the model of the flat earth. 
that means that there is a part of the public who does not accept concepts, models, and findings which have been not questioned for a long, long time. Are we back in the 19th and 20th century? It might seem so, but I'm optimistic because I believe that we have a stronger community. Compared to former times, there is now a strong communication community who is addressing the public, engaging the people, you, the experts from science centers, museums, science engagement, form networks of expertise and competence, like Excite, where you exchange ideas and develop new concepts for future science engagement activities. I strongly believe that in future, we have to work together intensively for two reasons. First, we have to be creative and innovative. We have to develop new tools for new challenges. Secondly, the described phenomena are not national or regional ones, nor European challenges, but global ones. By the way, these were two of the messages I took home from the Science Center World Summit in Tokyo last year. This Science Center World Summit has been an excellent occasion to discuss the future challenges. As you might know, the World Summits are prepared by six international networks, by ESPEC, ESTEC, Excite, NAMES, REDPOP, and SESTEC. Of course, most of the work is done by the local chairpersons and their teams. I am very happy and it's a pleasure for me to welcome the chairs from the last summit in Tokyo as well as from the upcoming one in Mexico, as well as the presidents of all the other five international networks. A warm welcome to all of you. As I said, we have to work together, especially also on the European level. And I'm optimistic that we will be innovative enough to address the future challenges. But we don't know what the challenges in three, four, five years will be. For sure, we need new concepts, new activities. To be able to work on future concepts, we need European funding as an indispensable requirement. There must be our own funding scheme like Science Within for Society in the upcoming framework program Horizon Europe. There's a group of Excite members who is advocating for that in Brussels. I would like to thank this group of people, also on the behalf of all other Excite members. You did a lot of efforts, but we have to wait and to see what will be the result in the future. Coming back to the Excite conference, a lot of common projects started at one of these conferences, meeting friends and colleagues, Sitting together and discussing issues of common interest is extremely important for all of us. Therefore, we need these Excite conferences and we depend strongly on colleagues like you, Jack, who spend time and energy in organizing these gatherings. I appreciate very much what you, dear Jack, and your team and the local organizing team has done so far. Thank you. Of course, Conference like ours would not be possible without sponsors, and I would like to thank all of the sponsors who have supported us. Especially, I would like to thank the Kaffley Foundation for sponsoring the keynote lecture on Friday morning. And there are two other groups I would like to mention. First, the team of the Excite head office in Brussels, Catherine Franche, and her team are extremely committed to the needs and the wishes of the Excite members. They overthink how the participants of a conference can obtain the biggest possible benefit of being here. It's, a real impressive, it's really impressive how you, Catherine, and your team tackle all these challenges. Thank you very much. Secondly, you know that we are an association which is driven by, ex by the members. Therefore, EXA needs institutions, or to, see, to say even more precise, persons who are willing to spend time for our network. I am very happy that we do have an excellent board 
with very committed members. I appreciate the collaboration with you very much. Perhaps I should mention that there is an event on Friday morning, the breakfast with the board, where you can interact directly with the board members. This is a new event, new type of event. Um, and this will be done on the pre-registration. And I have to say, I was very surprised how fast this event has been booked out, which shows me that there is a strong wish to stand together, to discuss things together, and to work even closer together, which for me is a good sign for the Excite family as such. Now let me present the members of the board. I can't see it from here. It must be first my own institution, Universum Bremen. Then it's Nemo, Michael Buchel. Then it's Barcelona, Anna Omendes. It's Heureka from Finland, Tapio Kwafu. Then uh, the Board of Trustees. It's Jean Baptiste from Toulouse. Robert Firmhofer. Well, it's Toulouse. I can't see it from here. So, ah, now it should be Robert Firmhofer from Copernicus in Poland. Kim Gladstone from Copenhagen. By the way, he is the chair of the upcoming Science uh, Excite conference. Ulrike Kastrup from Zurich. Luigi Amodio from Naples. Helen Jones from London. Stephen Bergman from Technopolis. Mia Kos from Slovenia. Bruno Maca from Paris. I hope you're still on the same track. No, I was not on the same track. I was too far. <laughs> okay, then I will mention all the others. John Alfred Anderson from Oslo. Um, please stand up, dear board members, and turn around so that everybody can see you. And if you have any questions, So if you have any questions and you are not able to join us for the breakfast with the board, please don't hesitate to contact us during these days. Thank you very much, and I'm looking forward for this great, brilliant conference. Thank you. Thank you. And now I invite Mrs. Catherine Franche, Excite Executive Director, Brussels. Mrs. Catherine Franche. Dear colleagues and guests, it's a sunny afternoon in the park. People lying around playing, elderly, kids and bikers, music in the distance. Some lie on the grass, Others brought their chairs and their picnic. I'm reading. A missile lands on my book. It's a football. An annoying dog barks, stopping me from listening to the music. Collisions in the park. I hear behind me the sound of plastic wrapper being, being unwrapped. What's happening? Will this plastic litter go in the garbage bin? I peek. The plastic wrap is on the grass while its owners are leaving. Shall I anticipate and remind them gently? Or should I focus on the next generation and speak with their children? How about if I give them facts or statistics? But facts won't change their beliefs. We in science engagement know this. And actually, do we share a common language? Should I learn their language? Or should they learn mine? We're all actors of the problem and of the solution, but technical and scientific jargon often keeps us apart. We need translators, science mediators, because 
as would have said Sheikh Anta Diop, democracy in a foreign language is an imposture. Shall I mind my own business, put my headphones on and just keep on reading? This book on the fourth industrial revolution is fascinating. Makes me realize that, and I quote, all technologies implicitly have values baked into them from the initial idea to how they are developed and deployed. We should recognize this and debate values at all stages of innovation, not just when they hurt someone with a voice. And that was Klaus Schwab from the World Economic Forum. It's in our power as science communicators to design trusted platforms for society to shape its technological future. If we have the power, we have the duty. But hush, no, no, I won't tell them anything about their plastic wrapper. Peaceful coexistence is more important than litter. But is it coexistence or indifference? Should I take a stance? And here I am, lying in the sun, with no sunscreen lotion on. Am I really more responsible? Oh, come on, come on. Let's hack the, pack, the park with all the neighbors. Maybe we could invent a vacuum cleaner powered by, well, recycled garbage. An autonomous, intelligent machine that goes from park to park to clean our human sediments and at night creates a laser show, the beauty of the show proportionate to how clean we left the parks during the day. Hold on, there's no garbage bin in this park. Where are the policy makers to provide us with tools to act as responsible citizens? I will need to use all my muscles, mostly my tongue, and speak with the mayor, voice the evidence, fight the false, empower the powerless, leave no one aside. Hmm, actually, you know what? These people came back and they picked up their litter. So I go by the river. Olga Tokarczuk writes, standing there on the embankment, staring into the current, I realize that in spite of all the risks involved, a thing in motion will always be better than a thing at rest. That change will always be a nobler thing than permanence. That that which is static will degenerate and decay, turn to ash, while that which is in motion is able to last for eternity. Life is movement. The world moves. Why are humans so reluctant to change, to reforming and progressive change? Suddenly, clouds appear, and the park becomes dark. It starts to rain. It pours, it winds, papers fly all over. A rainstorm, a political storm, an environmental storm, ethical, moral storm, disorder, turbulence, commotion, complexity, intolerance, anger, rage, and fight. Everybody rushes to the shelter. Everyone is giving a hand, helping each other. We huddle close under the canopy. All crowded, we are suddenly one. Differences fade away. New collisions occur. We talk, look into each other's eyes, begin to know each other, take care of one another. Patti Smith would have said, there was an absence of light, but not of love. We now invite each other, invent new ways of living together. Because we moved, migrated, changed, we went beyond appearances. I even found a way to recycle my old washing machine as a doghouse. Because you know that dog, at the beginning of my story, that was barking, was actually doing so because a child was getting too close to the river. It's never quite as it looks. Then the rain stops. We leave the park, but we don't lose the goals. The ones to make our planet sustainable, a place that would offer dignity to all its living creatures. 
There are 17 of these goals, and when we get there, we humans will be 18, grown up and mature. This little park, this little world, and now this little Excite Conference, a small world in itself, a shelter for three days, where differences are an asset, collisions are provoked, colors rub, where your creativity shines and your altruistic thoughtfulness is visible. But the conference doesn't rise on its own like the sun. Three wonderful teams are behind it. The Geneva Natural History Museum with CERN, the program committee, and my team, the Excite team. No fake news here. They are truly tremendous. I thank each person from these teams for their tremendous efforts in shaping the conference, and I thank you all for making it so beautiful and alive. Enjoy. Thank you. And now I invite Mr. Philippe Moreillon, Vice President of the Swiss Academy of Sciences, Mr. Philippe Moreillon, Baron. Mr. Geneva State Councillor, Mr. Geneva Mayor for Culture and Sport, Mr. Excite President, Mrs. Excite Executive Director, Mr. Director of the Lon Mrs. Director of the London Museum, Mr. Director of the Geneva Museum, ladies and gentlemen, dear colleagues, as Vice President of the Swiss Academy of Natural Sciences, it's a great honor for me to welcome you to this almost 30th Excite annual meeting. That was for the official part. But as a kind of a white hair senior here, I had the great privilege to follow a rich career in medicine and biology, and also at the direction of the research at the University Hospital at the, and the University of Lausanne before joining the academy. One thing, one thing I learned over all this time is that the word science means knowledge. It comes from Latin, it means knowledge. And the word science does not discriminate between better or lesser types of knowledges. It means knowledge. It was reminded a few minutes ago. Natural sciences, technology, humanities, business, ethics are all knowledges that should mutually respect each other and be shared as they were at the age of enlightenment, the siècle des Lumières, where mathematicians, chemists, naturalists, and philosophers were working hand in hand to understand the functioning of the world. Therefore, I was reassured when I browsed through the Excite website that Excite moved from the original American-inspired acronym European Collaboration for Science, Industry, and Technology Exhibition to the actual European Network of Science Centers and Museums with a mission of knowledge transmission at all levels of society. This is precisely one of the main missions of the Swiss Academy of Science as for other uh, world uh, academy of sciences in the world in addition to a few others such as scientific whistleblowing and advising politics and society on all issues where scientific competences can help prevent or improve. Comprehension of nature is an unprecedented privilege of the human brain, which in fact is an evolutionary project of nature itself over the last four billion years. From the original molecular replicator, life evolved by successive steps of, say, improvements in order to survive changing environmental conditions, up to the most sophisticated micro and macro organisms 
which in turn modify their environment voluntarily or by accident. This up to the Homo sapiens, or now the Homo technologicus, to quote French philosopher Michael Puech, or more recent Homo Deus, God, as proposed by Yuval Harari. In some respects, this evolution is frightening. On the other hand, it is also an amazing achievement of nature and evolution. The long-lasting success of this very Homo will depend on whether it has a wise man behavior, the Homo sapiens behavior, or not. The fantastic biological machinery, this fantastic biological machinery has managed to understand sophisticated mechanisms of nature, which he or she now transforms into human-made technological objects, supposedly to improve our life and our society. But what we should not forget that as sophisticated as these developments are, they are pure imitations of billion years old inventions by nature. And that each of these inventions have an evolutionary history that might be important for us to understand. This is the very role of museums. Think of the first cyanobacteria, which could capture light energy much before evolved plants or contemporary man-made solar panels. Think of viruses like retroviruses, which are as yet uninhibitable nanorobots that we fear because they are parasites. But they have been the main contributors of our own genome over time, representing up to 50% of our chromosomes. Think of our brains, which, as we are exchanging right now, consume less than two bulbs of elect electric bulb of energy as compared to eight nuclear power plants, eight nuclear power plants to feed internet and gaffas behind our iPhones. As sophisticated as we are, we are still sources of apprentices when we use technology without a minimum of knowledge of what they represent for life and society. Science without consciousness is the death of soul claimed French medic, writer, and priest Rabelais, who died in 1553, well before the great time of Renaissance. By conveying the understanding of science and nature at all levels, universities, academies, schools, and mostly museums, mostly museums, you are the guarantor of public understanding of science and apprehending knowledge in the most responsible way the most responsible way. Ladies and gentlemen, dear colleague, the educational job you do, i.e. transmission of knowledge, which is fed by curiosity, research, and internal requesting of what we believe is truth, that educational job is one of the most important contribution to society and social evolution. The wise man, understanding our past will help shape our future. Thank you for what you're doing. Thank you for listening. And have a great meeting. Excuse me, excuse me, Baba. Excuse me a moment, please. Excuse me. I know you are hungry, but uh, it's very important. Um, Ladies and gentlemen, uh, I've just received this communication from uh, Madame Curie uh, to Monsieur Piaget, which I must share with this distinguished assembly. Uh, yes, she addresses you too, indirectly. My dear Jean, it seems that our Jean-Jacques Rousseau slept for several more years. Yes, he needed to recuperate. So I was reluctant to wake him to tell him that I had been informed that the annual XI conference was to be held in Geneva at the beginning of June 2018, you will surely agree that we can't remain uninvolved in this extremely moving event at which we are the guest of honor. Yeah, yes, my dear friend Jean-Jacques, you and myself. 
Good people will be meeting to spread knowledge about knowledge. It is an unexpected opportunity to infiltrate the events without anyone realizing, to listen, to hear, to bring ourselves up to date on the march of knowledge. I recall your work, dear Jean, on the phases of intellectual development since birth. Now, you must urgently familiarize yourself with the story of artificial intelligence, which is on everyone's lips, and with the new first, first, 21st cent, 20, is difficult for, uh, for Marie Curie because she don't speak very well, but, uh, ah, yeah. <laughs> and with the new 21st century technologies of our human brothers and sisters, artificial intelligence. <laughs> can you imagine? Then, then if I can read, then we will dance among the eminent personages. Dear Jean, will you grant me a waltz incognito at the closing event? Goodness, I'm, I'm already excited, my dear. I like so this idea of slipping into these moments. Uh, oh, yes, only collusions in collisions, clashes of intellect. That is our fertile ground. Cultivate your garden, Voltaire said. Ah, mon Dieu, Voltaire. No, 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 Rousseau, Voltaire, no. No, it's not good, uh, what I have said. Uh, uh, Voltaire, imagine, too much voltage in that name for Rousseau, eh? but, uh, but he is uh, completely calm, uh, waking slowly, uh, listen, listen, listen to the words of Jean-Jacques awaking. Oh, my friend, I had a thousand confusing but delicious dreams with ecstasies, unexplained raptures to swallow me into the human schema to identify myself with all of nature. Excite, excite, ex ex excite, you said in my dream. What a strange word, excite. Yes, well, well, why not excite? But, uh, but not too exciting, please. I beg you, have had enough. We laid out the paths. Let me, next to mine, continue dreaming by the shore of Lake Léman for posterity. Mm -hmm. On my behalf, please, salute and thank everyone. I'm sending you positive thought waves from the lake. See you later, my dear Marie. Bye. And he goes. So calmly. So, dear Jean Piaget, let us go, you and me, invisible, inaudible, let us go to this exciting pleasure. But, shh, shh, shh. goodbye for now, your friend, Marie. Voilà. Alors, uh, well, uh, dear assembly, uh, I will also go by the lake hmm? with uh, Jean-Jacques Rousseau uh, near uh, le, le de la lac, le la perle, perle le du perle. lac. Oh yeah, la yeah. perle. Du, I, I, I lose my French. Yeah. <laughs> Goodbye. And now I invite Mrs. Sharon Hammond, chairperson of jury of Mariano Gago Awards and director of the Museum of London, Mrs. Sharon Hammond. Uh, thank you. <laughs> Great to be here, everyone, um, and particularly, of course, because I have this great job of being the chairperson of the jury of the Mariano, Mariano Gago Awards. So I'm standing here so I can see the slides. Great. This is the fourth 
um, version, this fourth time we have given these awards. And every time the quality of the applicants, the number goes up. It's so exciting and it's such a privilege because it gives me and the other ju judges a sense of the whole breadth of activity across the Excite family. The awards were named in tribute to Jose Mariano Gago. And as you can see from these words here, he espouses or has espoused uh, the true um, meaning of brilliant public engagement with science and the principles and the qualities that we look for in these awards, which are innovation, creativity and real impact. And after all, that's why we do our work. Mariano um, established an organisation which we're really pleased and proud is the sponsor of the awards. Uh, LIP, the Laboratory of Instrumentation and Experimental Physics, um, was established in 1986. And I'd like to say a huge thank you to them for uh, supporting this award. And if there's any other sponsors out there who would like to help us even further, then please come and see me at the end. I had to do that. So, who are the jury? Well, apart from me, who some of you know, and I've spent most of my life uh, working in the field of public engagement with science, and now I'm working in the field of public engagement with cities, uh, which is very similar. Uh, we have Sarah Davis, who uh, wo uh, works in Copenhagen, and um, she has provided great kind of researcher insight, I think, as we've looked at the applications. And David Harvey, who um, has a long history of working uh, at the American Museum of Natural History in the field of um, exhibitions and public engagement. So together, us three, with the help of Julie Becker at the Excite office, um, went through many applications and made our deliberations. Uh, some of them made us smile, some of them made us uh, step back in awe as we saw the work of you all. So, uh, we have two categories. Uh, one is smart and simple, the other is sustainable success. And um, I'm going to build up to, the, uh, to announcing the winner now. But before I do, uh, there's this, this kind of weird coincidence around both of the awards that we have given, or the organizations and the projects that we have supported, because there is a theme which will become very apparent. So, in the area of smart and simple, uh, this, um, this award made what can I say? It made me, they're so cute, so cute and fantastic and impactful. And it, makes, it made us think about how you can start to engage humans with science from a very early age. So the winner of uh, Smart and Simple is the Exploratorio Scienza Viva for Astronomy for Babies. So here's some pictures, some images of astronomy for babies, and I'll tell you why we chose them, apart from the fact that babies are sometimes cute. <laughs> so here's some images of this project. We loved it. We loved it because this was driven from observation. Well, what wonderful scientific principle could you go to when you think about developing something based on what the team in the centre had seen. That children, very young children, were, when they arrived at the planetarium, were really engaged, but there was no provision for them. So this wonderful emotional link that they wanted to draw out for these very, very young people. They created a 23-minute film. And um, they have and, and developed it all in-house. Um, uh, what they noticed, and this whole thing is about 
keeping young people, the young children, really engaged with the imagery, and it really, really works. The annual awards for them will enable them to think more and to extend this project and perhaps develop more with other institutions. So I would like to welcome the Exploratorio team and Paolo Renato up to the stage. Paolo. Fan Thank you very much. Fantastic. We're going to have your photograph taken. Good morning, everybody. I would like to decide to divide, divide my time into two topics. I would uh, like to speak a little bit, a little bit about emotions and about projects. About emotions, it's, it's very simple to say. Of course, we are very honored. We are very happy with this, uh, this word. And uh, uh, when I think about emotions, I always uh, remember me, uh, Marianne Gag, José Marianne Gag, a very good friend and a person who creates CNCF in Portugal. It's time to say thank you, Marianne Gag. About projects, uh, we in Portugal, since a long time, uh, we have a fantastic place to have collisions. Is our CNCV network. Uh, some of these collisions are, of, of course, creative, and we, this, we plan to spend all next year to improve the quality of this project. And I promise to you that in next year, we will be here with a new project ready to share with everybody. Thank you. The second award is for sustainable success. Um, we also love this project uh, because it showed the real long-term uh, value of a project and its ability to engage people through bringing together, and indeed in a real collision, um, a whole range of a new approach, a new approach to this subject, which was hugely emotionally impactful. Um, I've been told, I've been given a lesson in how to pronounce uh, the name of this organization, but I can't do it. I was told that to pronounce uh, the, to, to pronounce the name of this organization, I needed to have a hot potato in my mouth. <laughs> there, I'm sure, will be lots of hot potatoes in this uh, conference um, uh, this, uh, this year, but I don't have one now. So I will ha simply have to announce the winner is Tycho Bra from uh, Copenhagen, Denmark, for their Made in Space astrophysics exhibition. So, so now you can see the theme, of course. Obviously, the judges were thinking and looking at the stars, of course, uh, when we made our decisions. But this is the reason, and here's some images of Made in Space, and I'll tell you why we chose this uh, project. We chose this project because it brought together uh, a real aesthetic with this topic that is often um, perhaps hard for people to engage with. And the exhibition really thought about and put humans at the center as the subject matter, connecting us as humans to these great phenomenal events which are almost unimaginable. Um, making sure that we, as the person, can see the connection. Um, it's, it was, it's worked really well with a whole range of audiences and has had huge uh, public acclaim. Um, and it's really robust. The uh, content of the exhibition uh, has been scientifically peer-reviewed, if you must, with lots of input and... Um, uh, and uh, uh, scientific help along the way. But what they developed was this really strong aesthetic, um, which is bringing 
bigger connections, better connections between people and this audience. So I would like to invite Tina Ibsen, who's the Head of Science and Outreach, to come and receive the award and say some words. Thank you. Tina, well done. have to find my papers and normally I don't really do speeches I just wing it but I was told from my boss that I had to say something proper today so I will <laughs> first of all I'd like to thank the jury for this really really great honor we really tried to do something new with our exhibition made in space despite many years of work uh, and a number of different initiatives we do still see a lack of girls and women working in the fields of astrophysics and in hard sciences in general. Thanks to the Epi Miller Foundation, we got a chance to really rethink how to do an exhibition about astronomy. Without their support and willingness to let us try something new, we would not have been able to see this project through to the end. I'd like to thank Dr. Marianne Akiam and PhD student Lini Nikolaisen for helping us with the whole science behind all of the inclusion principles that we apply to the exhibition. We can see now that Maiden Space invites a more diverse group of visitors. And even for once, the press have been thrilled. Uh, one said that I'm sure you can get a good philosophical conversation out of this exhibition with your children. We must all do better to include more people in science. It's essential because we do face a lot of challenges now and we will as well in the future. We hope that you'll all take this opportunity to learn from our findings and experiences. We hope that you'll be our teachers and share your findings. And then together, we can bring the wonders of our blue planet and our amazing surrounding universe to a broader audience. Thank you. So my final plea to you all is to be inspired by those organizations that have won two fantastic projects, absolutely fantastic, and to submit award, your award, your make a submission for next year. Um, we will continue. It is becoming a fantastic thing. And um, we urge you all to participate in next year's awards. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you. And now I invite you to take your first coffee break at the Business Bistro on the ground floor. Enjoy your excited conference and have a nice day. <laughs>